What is a bad artist? Is it an artist whose music video just sucks? Or is it an artist that doesn't know how to perform? Or is it just an artist who shouldn't be making music at all? Because we all know they're out there. I might say all of those can define a quote unquote bad artist. But concerning the artist whose video I'm going to talk about today, bad just means insecure or unsure of herself. Now, it's all allegations, but how do you direct an artist who's insecure in front of the camera? How do you still get an amazing look? Because I'm sure you know the camera picks up everything, every emotion, every reaction. I mean, we shoot in 8K, 12K, 17K, all these different Ks. If you feel unsure of yourself or nervous, these things will be transferred into the footage, into the final product. Y'all get what I'm saying. So just how do you get good shots without the audience feeling that nervous, seeing that nervousness? In order to answer that, I need to first break down this video. So there's an artist named Jay, who at the time was dating a friend of mine named Tony, who was the producer of the song Come Over. He reached out to me saying that he wanted me to do a visual to it. Now, when I heard the song, I knew it had to feel like something very intimate. I mean, like, very intimate. So, after hearing Tony's idea, which would show these two guys entering, like, sort of a peep show where you can look but not touch, I threw out the deal of having her performance scene show her in this type of encasing where, again, you actually can look but you can't physically touch. Almost like a vintage Barbie doll of some sort, right? My other idea for a second performance was to have Jay be the centerpiece while four other women performed on top of their own stages, their own smaller stages. Both Tony and Jay loved the idea, so we moved on in the pre-production. Tony scouted this bar location that we would have private access to without touching the budget. While he did that, me and Jay bounced wardrobe and hair ideas back and forth until we had a look that we liked. And then concerning the encasement I wanted Jay to perform in, I ended up finding this huge furniture piece at a flea market. So moving from pre-production to production, the shoot day went great. We opted to shoot on the Aria Alexa Mini with Tokina lenses. In order to give movement, we partnered this with the DJI Ronin 2. Now, the first scene was this hallway look. Let's talk about the lighting. The green light that you see above is an Aperture B7C, which we actually gave that light away in our first giveaway. And we got another giveaway coming soon, so you should hit that subscribe button. We placed the girls on each side and lined the floor with these Quasar tubes. And then that red light the girl is walking towards, we tucked an Aperture Nova 300 into the corner and flooded it with red light in that room. In the video, this is the first shot that you see. I wanted to open it up with something very cinematic that caught people's attention quickly. Now our next scene was probably the most intricate concerning lights. Our location had two different floors. We shot on the first floor and placed four Aperture 300s at the top of the balcony, each having spotlight mounts. Hazing the room, we spotlighted each girl standing on a small red platform. The haze is what gave us these beams. Now the platforms were just some wooden boxes that I found on Facebook Marketplace and I painted them red. Hence, taking us back to that red light we initially saw. We then keyed the artist Jay with an Aperture 600 through a 4x4 magic cloth. Here's some advice that can really help put your shy or insecure artist in the best light or the best performance. Create scenarios where it will require less movement from them. Because of the shafts of light and the girls moving on the platforms and the movement of the camera with the Ronin 2, our artist was allowed to stay still in one spot and just focus on performing. Essentially, I compartmentalized her actions in a way. Did I, did I say that word right? It's like if you're nervous about what to do with your face and your feet and your hands, it just may be too much for you if you're not seasoned at performing. But if you lessen that load, it can help out a lot more than you think. Now, all your artist has to focus on is remembering their lines and performing. Now, this is a great tip, but it's not the biggest one. The bigger tip, I didn't even notice until the end of the shoot. But before I move to the other scene and tell you what that tip is, if you're enjoying this type of content, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything that I drop. All right, time for the next scene. So the next scene was possibly my favorite of them all. We placed all of the girls on top of a pool table. We actually came up with this scene last minute on the day. 
since in my other scenes the girls never actually interacted with Jay, I felt a scene was needed where they were closer together and interacting with one another. But even though it was more simplistic, it still worked because we had Jay sitting. Now I opted to have her sit because that kept things simple. It allowed Jay to stay sitting and we worked off the movement of the other girls so Jay could just focus on performing again. Now, concerning the lighting, there's a B7C off camera left, which we decided to set to that green color before to tie the scenes together. And then the red kind of lighting that you're seeing on the right side is the Nova 300. Now, you guys can't see it, but the space where we were was basically non-existent. There was the camera, and then us, and then a wall. So to key the artist, my DP took two quasar tubes and rigged them into the ceiling vertically. So essentially they dropped down from the ceiling. Even with all these challenges, I think the shot came out perfect. Now last but certainly not least is the encasement scene. This is the scene where I learned the tip I'm gonna give you today. What I wanted was to show the girl's hands grabbing at the artist on the glass, almost like them wanting to get to her but not being able to, giving a sense of desire. So we put Jay inside the case. We then took the top off of the case so we could menace arm and Amaran flex light above. We once again set the color to green. I'm not sure why green, don't ask me. Maybe I just watched The Matrix recently or something, I don't know. We then lined the inside of the case with three Nanlite Pavo tubes, which you see reflections of in the shots. But that's the great thing about tubes. I mean, I've, I've said it in my previous videos. They work great as practicals and add to the scene. But, there's always a but. There was something else that made this scene great. And I didn't notice it until our third take. Jay was giving the best performance that I'd seen that entire day. At first, I thought it might have been because she'd warmed up, but then it hit me. So after the first few takes, my DP decided to throw on a tighter lens and back the camera up. The distance that we put between the artist and the camera put her a little more at ease. So as directors and shooters, we don't think about it because we're behind the camera. But when a person has all these lights and cameras and eyes, pointed at them, that can really add a lot of pressure. So if you're ever dealing with an artist who is coming off shy or nervous, try shooting on a longer lens and putting some space between you and that artist. That way, they can breathe. Now again, it's all speculation that Jay was nervous or insecure, but that's how it came off, until we put a tighter lens on. Now that's not the only benefit of shooting on a longer lens, there are other benefits. 